Brian Neiman, Brian Wilson, Mary Catherine Hamm, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority. 637 on WMAL. Brian Neiman, Mary Catherine Hamm, Brian Wilson. Peter Barisi joins us now, University of Maryland economist. You can also follow him on Twitter these days. P. Marisi1 is his handle. Good morning, Peter. Good morning. So we've, we're down, we're up, we're down. Wild swings on Wall Street this week. There seems to be panic going on. Is it warranted? I don't believe it is. I mean, the economy is in slow gear, but it hasn't, it hasn't tanked on this side of the pond. And over in Europe, they can contain this if they want to. This is not Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers, and AIG all over again. These are sovereign countries whose debt is, we know where it is, and it's basically on the books of the banks. And frankly, the ECB, the European Central Bank, can run the printing presses uh, and, and replace those bonds with euros. <clears throat> there seems it's not optimal, but it can be done. The printing presses were run here, but it was after it was over. You know, it was after when it was too late. So then why is everybody so concerned then? Why, why, why the massive well, sell-off? we have this drama of the... It's kind of like an adolescent pretending he's now independent from his parents. The European Central Bank tries to pretend that it is an independent entity when it is not. The Germans can put it out of its misery any morning they want to, just by leaving the Eurozone. If it doesn't do what the political leaders in Germany and France want it to do, either they, they will simply replace it. So, I mean, for them to pretend that they are the guardians of the exchequer and of monetary sanity is absolutely foolish. No one is going to let willingly let Europe go into a second great recession because uh, the, the the European Central Bank wants to assert itself as a super sovereign. So, do you do you so do you think all of the problems we've had in the markets uh, here in the U.S. are related to issues in Europe, not here in the United no, States? No, I don't. I believe the lack of leadership from the White House on the jobs problem in the economy is also really quite important. I mean, there are real fears of another recession, and it could happen. It's about a 50-50 chance. I'd say 50-50 minus. If I have to place my bets, my bets are we'll manage to keep on growing. But, you know, that's if I had a bet. Mm -hmm. And But uh, my feeling is the president continuing to campaign, go on vacation, leave things to Tim Geithner. Heck, leaving things to Tim Geithner. <laughs> is like the Wizard of Oz putting a gone-for-lunch sign up and leaving the kingdom in the charge of the straw man. Well, but what, don't you think that it was President Obama who, who convinced Geithner to stay? I mean, it seems like Geithner was the one for months saying that he wanted to get out. He was ready to head back to the private sector, and it was the president who brought him back in or said, you can't leave. Forgive me if you get negative emails for this, but anyone who thinks that Tim Geithner is the indispensable financial mind, is of suspect intelligence. Uh, I mean, he, I know, he, he considers him one of his most valued advisors, along with Hillary Clinton. There's a big difference between foreign policy and, and, domestic, and, and the domestic policy. On the foreign policy side and on defense, the president has a very clear idea of what he wants to do. And you might not like it, but he is getting it done. You might not like what he's getting done, but he is executing on the economic side, yesterday they said they they put out a request for ideas right. to, to to deal with the, uh, the, the the all the all the properties on their hands that they're going to have to rent out. They are clueless at the treasury. Yeah, I mean, Tim Geithner should be given a pair of short pants. If he, <laughs> <laughs> Peter, if you had your druthers, what would the Obama administration be doing? What would be the ideas that they would? push forth and does it make you feel better see, see we're of the opinion that we're kind of like eh, maybe just go on vacation yeah have them go this, on vacation at this point stay out of it. Do it next week yeah. you know I mean, well certainly we don't want mr obama to do anything else <laughs> right that's right that's why, that's why we want him on vacation you know I mean, jimmy carter was better he couldn't get anything done uh well what i'd like him to do is to boost domestic demand that's where the problem is and you can do that in two ways one is by developing domestic oil and gas that gives you a privately financed infrastructure problem program. You know, it's the same stuff to drill for oil as it is to build an overpass. Concrete, steel, union jobs, all that stuff Democrats like. The problem is Barack Obama thinks that get the gasoline and, air, and the fuel in Air Force One, you know, just mystically appears like manna from the god of liberals above. <laughs> you know, he, he just he just 
he thinks it just mystically appears. You know, so we continue to burn gasoline and we send all these dollars abroad that don't come back. The other thing, he finally has to do something about China. But that will, you know, but that really brings up the issue of the lion in the Wizard of Oz. Remember what the lion didn't have? Didn't have courage. Exactly. The wizard is really the great mystical god of liberals that sits behind the editorial board of NPR and the New York Times. <laughs> And the wizard and, and, and the lion is the president, and the straw man is Tim Geithner. If you want to know who the tin man is, yeah. it's the girl in this one. You know, it's modern PC. Yeah. The tin man be Hillary. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I can, I no can dig heart. that. <laughs> no heart. All right. That's why we like her. Hey, listen, I, I've read an article that you have written, and this is what I really want to know. I'm going to read the first paragraph. At times of peril, when all around are panicking, the person who stays calm can see the facts, act prudently, and not merely survive, but prosper. That's what, that's how you start out this article, saying that this is no time to panic. But you say the person who acts prudently can prosper, but you don't really tell me what I want to know is, in your mind right now, what is the prudent course of action? Right now, what I am doing is writing it out. I'm not selling stocks. I even bought a few this week. And I'm staying strong in cash to the extent I have it. You know, if you're older, you should have more cash, and I'm an older person. But he, but for younger people, you know, a moderate amount of cash for a rainy day and staying in the market and just ride it out. Uh, as far as making, say, a real estate decision, that is really person-specific. It has to do with what market you're in and, you know, how good a job you are. If you're an investment banker, you should, you should buy in Manhattan real estate. But if you're an ordinary person who's worried about their job, chances are you won't be able to sell the house if you buy it, so you ought to rent. And those are the basic decisions people have to make. Don't buy a car right now if the one you have runs. And be very careful with your household finances. That might not be good for stimulating spending, mm -hmm. but that's not your job. It's the president's. And since he's out campaigning again, you know, I, remarkable, remarkable. But all the money that he has raised, this is like a 400-pound man who's just had four stakes at, you know, at, at, at the International House saying, give me three stacks of pancakes now, please. He doesn't need any more money. He needs some ideas. But, you know, he's got Tim for that. <laughs> all right. Well, if yeah, Europe collapses in the next week, we'll know, where, uh, we'll know where to turn since you'll be over there. Enjoy your well, vacation. I'm going to be in Italy next week. The other thing I'm doing is, is I told you what I'm doing with my money. I'm going on vacation. I can't handle this. I'm yeah. going to Take Venice, Florence, and Rome. And nice. I'm going to visit Pompeii. So I can wow. see America's future under Barack Obama. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Maybe you should take Geithner with you. I, I see you take it with that. I refuse. I refuse to do tutorials on failing graduate students when I'm away. All right. He was my. If he had been my student, which he could have been, because my course is offered at Tice. All right. I would have recommended he become a pastry chef. All right, Peter Morisi, taking some of that Kiro Sierra money over to Good Italy for you. Good for you. Bye -bye. Just click your heels to come home. That's right.